Grand Rising. <laughs> Grand Rising. <laughs> Today we're going to be um, bringing some ritual and some love, as we said yesterday, all about grounding and releasing. Um, we're about to have all our kind of astrological energies moving into fire next week. So this is our last kind of time, like in these moments and these coming days, to just really get back into our bodies so that we're grounded, feeling safe and in our hearts, and just really kind of just release what's left of the waters from Pisces before it's like birthed into fire and action next week. Oh, I like that word, burst. Yeah. Yeah, we have to let go to be reborn, right? So... Right. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. is going to pull a car. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that well, one flew out for you. So, so We're working with the mushroom deck today. Yes, the mushroom yeah. spirit oracle. Ooh, lovely. Um, so Isolation for me, which is <laughs> true. appropriate. I'm about to embark on um, a journey of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I am. I'm about to go off to the mountains and the jungles with... Um, my little friend, Cambo. Mm. So I, I, I want to share it, but I feel almost paralysed to bring words together. That's just a little bit about the meaning and of so, what that card means. Parrot wax cap. It's green. I just see green and I think frog. All I can think of is That's frog. That's true. Yeah. The wax cap likes to be left alone and it's easy to understand why. Isolation can be a good thing, left untouched by pollution, noise and people. It grows well. So if you are left to your own devices, you are capable of growth without all the things, the things, the distractions and things. What you thought you needed to survive might not actually be necessary. You would be surprised at how little you really need at all. I won't read the whole thing, no. but it is. It's about simplifying and we don't need all these distractions and things. It's about getting back to the basics, what's real. Real water, <laughs> real food, real love, authenticity. And I think with authenticity and simplicity comes uh, a lot of truth and our inner truth. And that is our truest guide. So strip it back and um, yeah. keep it simple. I've got chugger, mm. which is interesting. Defense balance. So I'll just share a little bit. So, so this means defense balance. Chugga is quite unusual looking mushroom. Grows on the bark of the trees. It is a conch rather than a mushroom. People. So yeah, uh, so uh, Chugga is the king when it comes to helping the body defend itself and ward off potential dangers in your health. Where in your life could you be uh, have something or someone attached to you that is not serving a higher purpose or creating a hindrance of some sort? It's time to build your defence. Um, so, so strong that nothing can penetrate. So I think it's like, that's quite an interesting one because I feel like if you're doing any kind of like energy work and offering something of some sort, whether it's yoga or plant medicine or... Uh, mm. body work for instance that I do um, <clears throat> it's really important to protect your energy and try and not absorb other people's or, and make mm. sure that you're cleansing your space their space so it's not just a protection of you it's a protection for them because you don't want to project onto mm. them either do you because we yeah. all have things There's going on sovereignty in how we're feeling yeah so i think defense is quite a strong word but it's almost like same as protection because you need to protect yourself uh and there are many mudras <clears throat> that i will show you one today but there are many mudras that can protect you and your chakras um and make sure that you avoid <clears throat> things like getting sick and mm. your immune system coming low because you're in that doing um and I think with grounding that's why it's so important to ground and mm. to let go because if you're in that doing space that can lead to so many other things sickness fatigue yeah because um, it's disassociation from the body isn't it yeah all the magic comes from embodiment and feeling yeah less doing it is it it is a balance though isn't it the doing and the being is a balance yeah 
yeah, that we are human beings. So. You've got to be in, <laughs> in both, obviously, because in life we have to balance both energies, the masculine and the feminine, and the masculine is the doing and the feminine is the nurturing and the yeah, it's the rest. structure and the framework and the protection, isn't it? <clears throat> and then all the magic happens within that container. The feminine is free to flow within the container of the held masculine. Yes. And, um, yeah. Mm. So, cacao this morning. Cheers. Oh, oh, mama cacao. Sacred cheers. Mm. The medicine of the gods. Here to heal the hearts of the people. Bringing us back into our bodies, into our hearts, and thus into our own magic. So grounding and loving. Um, today we have the addition of cordyceps to help us release and let go. Cordyceps is the mushroom that helps the body to release and let go, but detox from metals, acids, um, toxins, anything that's held in the body from stresses, from emotions that aren't really serving you anymore. Uh, cordyceps is that mushroom. Um, a mushroom for the daytime because it promotes action. Even though it's not stimulating as such, it promotes action in the body. So it's a daytime mushroom. And with the help of Reishi, oh, she is my like, favorite. yeah, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's in a lot of my uh, elixirs. You might have noticed it's Reishi and something. This is because Reishi is such a grounding mushroom. Again, bringing you into your heart, into your body, releasing any stress that's held. So any cortisol and adrenaline that you've accumulated, from maybe drinking coffee and doing, 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 doing. <laughs> Reishi helps us to ground, come back into our bodies and dissolving those um, elements so that we're able to kind of bring our nervous system back into the parasympathetic state, which is our rest state. And I think sometimes we uh, mistake or confuse or lapse in mind that just because we're in our rest state, that doesn't mean we're not productive. And I find actually for myself, my best levels of uh, magic and productivity come from when I'm in a rest, calm state. And that, yes, yeah, I say that really is where all the magic is, is when you're in your rest body, kind of grounded state of being rather than that frantic, headless chicken of doing and yeah, all that peripheral noise and brain activity. It's like, bring some stillness. Yeah, for sure. It's... um. It's also like, it's a really beautiful giver of clarity when mm. you learn to just bring yourself back into stillness. Yeah. And you'll find that if you're so used to being in that doing side of your, your brain, when you do come into that place of stillness, it feels strange. It feels almost like you're trying to battle with it a little bit at the beginning. Mm. That's why breath is really important because the breath is something that you can focus on, which I'll go through later but it's it's uh really vital in bringing yourself back into the body embodiment it, it's it's so important it's that's so the important. practice isn't it the medicine for the west i think yeah um, i think we all need it's it it's been my practice yeah embodiment i didn't realize how disassociated and embodied i was until i got Embodied <laughs> yeah. until I you came back realize. to my body and all this feeling. I I knew how I felt. I knew if something didn't feel quite right or, yeah, it's about listening, isn't it? Um, we are incredible instruments, and if we just listen, our body is constantly communicating with us, um, asking for our attention, letting us know when something might not be quite right or that somebody might not be quite right for you or that thing. That something and um trusting your intuition you only get that voice when you're listening and you can only hear that voice when you're back into like in your body mm. is that what they call it, a gut feeling right isn't it that, well that's your little it's, inner voice it's it's so true the gut is more powerful sometimes than the mind Absolutely. because the gut will send the signal straight away if there's something that's not quite feeling right mm. or you know it straight away puts you into that flight or fight mode if you're feeling unsafe yeah in a compass isn't it yeah and also the throat chakra which i think is actually missed sometimes mm. with um when in the ability to ground because we get so used to thinking grounding is all about the root yes it, it is but it's to be honest it's about all the chakras because <laughs> even the solar plexus <laughs> is where we create a lot of anxiety and then that 
is the gut. So, you know, if you're feeling anxious, it's all in the solar plexus. So balancing the solar plexus and also the throat chakra, because the throat is how you communicate. And if you are feeling very in your head, you're not going to be able to express yourself properly. Your throat can close up. You can't get your words out. Um, you can stumble over the words. And that's another sign that maybe you're a little bit unbalanced and you know to create some space for release um that can be through the breath obviously but also chanting is a really mm. beautiful way to open up the throat yeah so i think let's begin our morning ritual and i mentioned in a previous video one of the quickest ways to help us kind of come back to that heart space actually is by um being in gratitude and I am a strong, um, I don't want to say believer, but prayer is my anchor. I, I spend a lot of time in prayer, whether that's before I eat in the mornings or, yeah. So I believe prayer, be it silent or spoken, is an incredible tool of connection. So with your cacao, it's nice to give some gratitude and prayer to whoever, whatever that is for you. So I'm going to open in prayer and then over to Tuesday, who's going to begin our practice this morning. So I'd say to shut down the eyes and bring the cacao to your heart because she is the medicine of love. So, Spirit of cacao, the keeper of sacred heart wisdom, the medicine of our ancestors and our people. We invite you to open our hearts, to nourish our bodies and to guide us back to our inner truth. May you bring peace and joy to all those in need of your healing. Let the roots of our being travel deep and our light shine bright, guiding others home to their hearts. As we sit together, grounded and present, we are grateful for our past and for this very moment. Together may we release all that no longer serves us, remembering that we are whole, we are loved, and together may we heal as one. Aho. Mm, thank you. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay, so today, rather than doing a full physical yoga practice, we're going to stay seated. Um, we're going to do a little bit of upper body stretches just to open up the chest and open up the throat um, because I'm going to be working in the throat. So what I was saying earlier, um, to, to ground is also to open up other channels as well. So heart and throat is kind of what I'm working with today. So let's just take a moment, get into a comfortable seated position, open up your chakra, chakras and normally with <laughs> chin mudra, you can just keep the palms fully open, rested onto the knees and just close your eyes and just take a deep breath. And when you take that exhalation, just make sure that the, the belly is really pushing out. So you're taking all the air into the belly. Hold it here. And then let's exhale through the mouth. You can sigh. You can, you can release some tension in the throat if you want. Take another one. All the way, so your belly is really full with air. And release. <sighs> Just drop into that tailbone as well. Are you holding on to any tension in the backs of the thighs, your jaw, your third eye, that space between the eyebrow? Just check in with the body. Maybe you want to do a little shoulder roll. Drop it down. Just check in with yourself, maybe shift around, shift some energy around. I'm going to take one last deep breath. Fill the lungs up, fill the belly up, hold it here. And release. <laughs> It's okay to be soft, 
just let go of any of that tension either on feeling it in the backs of the thighs so just let go wherever yours may be take that intention to that place of the body just scan your body from the top of your crown all the way down to the base of the spine Try and let go of tensing of the tummy, clenching eyes, dropping of the shoulders, and frowning, maybe clenching your jaw. Just release and just tell yourself it's okay, you're safe to let go in this space. And when you're ready, just slowly open your eyes, but keeping the gaze soft. Keeping always the gaze soft and low. I'm going to just work into some shoulder tension and direct the breath. So with the right arm, reach up nice and tall. Drop the hand down just as far as it will allow you, so no pressure. Take the left hand and just place it onto the elbow. We're just gonna ease it down, but while we're here, let's take some <sighs> conscious breaths. So in through the nose, and out through the nose slowly. Check in with how your shoulders are feeling. Is it tight? Do you feel quite relaxed? Just keep using the breath. Deep, deep. So all of that tightness is just leaving your body. We're just opening up the chest into the heart space. So you can feel quite vulnerable here. So just really tune in with your great breathing. You lose jail. <laughs> yeah. See, the dogs always know, guys. <laughs> they are They're such in. a great, ju not judge, but uh, expression of our current energy. Beautiful, one more breath. Mm -hmm. And release. Just maybe shake it out a little bit before we take it on the other side. And let's reach up nice and tall, left, left arm this time. Reach down and then grab hold of the elbow and just push that elbow down. Hmm, the side's a little bit looser this time. Interesting, yeah. Take note of which side is feeling more softer and easier to work with. Definitely my left is feeling better. It was hideously tight last week. Yeah. So this is this is really important to really notice how the change in yourself. I had a lot of stillness this week in preparation and grounding and um, resting, 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 nurturing, eating, sleeping. So my feminine is like, oh, it's she's like, back. Thank God, she's, oh. here. she's home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's it. It's really, really, really important to do this, That's especially good. if you're on the run up to anything like you're doing, you know, some medicine work. Mm hmm. I'm sure I'll go straight back into my head over the next two days. <laughs> that's, so what, that's what the medicine's for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the challenge a little bit. I can't wait to share this, but I'm very excited. <laughs> Beautiful. Last breath. And release. Let's take a few just gentle head rolls. 
Oh, very clicky for me. If you have any tension, just make sure when you're drawing the chin down, we're taking the inhale. And on the rise, we exhale. So connecting the breath so that we can release that tension. Taking it around the other way. back to center. Big deep breath and then exhale through the mouth. <sighs> so really sinking the spine down a little bit more before we take the next one. I'm going to swatch, swap feet. I've got pins and needles which is really weird. <laughs> Ooh, something's, something's gone there. That's weird. Interesting. <sighs> okay, so we're going to do a mudra and a breathwork technique. So this is really connected with the element water and also the throat chakra. So with the mudra, you take the right thumb. Okay, and this is called the Shankar mudra. So shell-like. This is what the mudra looks like when we're in full effect. What we do is we place the thumb inside bear with me guys <laughs> <laughs> i'll start here <laughs> inside the palm and then we wrap the left hand around that thumb okay that's it so almost like grabbing your thumb yeah like so no and other way right. that's it that's it. it doesn't matter what side whatever comes intuitively honestly it doesn't matter if you grab the right or the left if it's pulling you towards one then maybe it needs to be that side so Take what you need, okay? We then move the right hand up. So interesting, I'm on the left with the, mm. with the left thumb. So we move the hand up. So already it looks like a shell, yeah? And then we place that thumb on the middle index finger. So there we go. Looks more complicated than it is, but it just takes practice, okay? <laughs> a little bit of figuring out. So... We place it here, just on the chest, a little bit under the throat chakra. We're going to be here for, let's take 10 breaths, okay? So with the breath, we're taking the breath always through the nose. This is very similar breath work technique to Ujjayi. So if you're familiar with Ujjayi, you always take the breath in through the nose and then on the exhale, again, through the nose slowly. Create an ocean-like sound in the back of the throat. So on the exhale, you should either be sighing or creating that beautiful ocean sound. So we're going to take it nice and slow. Taking the breath in through the nose. And then slowly exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. In your mind's eye, just picture the waves of the ocean. Exhale. Peace and serenity. Inhale. Exhale. Letting it wash away any tension. Inhale. Hold at the top for this one, just for a little bit longer. And slowly exhale. Slower this time, inhale. And slowly exhale. Inhale. 
Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale slowly. Last one. Inhale. And slowly exhale. Release the hands. Just drop them down below the belly. It's almost like a puppy. Just by the sacral chakra. Keep the eyes closed and just imagine you're looking out into the ocean, feeling peaceful, feeling serene. Feeling your throat a little bit more clear, fluid. And with this mudra, it really allows you to tap into that sweet sound voice. So let's just drop into that. Sweet sound, soft. Letting everything that no longer serves, any tension, any anxiety, just wash away. And just envision that beautiful colour, blue, aqua, aquamarine blue. And just envision it by the throat, just spinning around. What does it look like to you? Is it still? Is it spinning? Is it just floating like waves? And know that you are now safe here, feeling more grounded. More at peace. Beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a really nice one for clarity and just cleanse. Sitting that stillness is just wonderful. It's so beautiful. I was just, <laughs> um, whilst sitting in that stillness and letting thoughts pass rather than attaching, um, what might be a nice practice to do this week before we welcome in all that beautiful fiery Leo and Aries energies, because whilst we're feeling a little bit more grounded and still, is to journal. Or if that's new to you, that could look like just a few sentences of intention. As I say, before we move into that fiery doing action, Aries is very, I am, I am ready, I am doing, let's go. Leo's like, yeah, look at me, I've got this. So before we move <laughs> all into this energy, you might not be feeling like you got this. So maybe give yourself some intention or rather than, if that feels uncomfortable, setting yourself intentions, maybe little subtle reminders. Maybe that looks like I am enough. I am still, I am present, I am grounded. So whatever gives you some kind of anchor and stability maybe, or holding as we move into this new energetic realm, because 
it might be, feel a little bit like a baptism by fire as we move into these new energies. And with all this kind of energy of watery release, that dreamlike Pisces, mystical, poetic, anything can happen, dreamlike energy to then be thrown into the flames. <laughs> it can maybe feel a little overwhelming. So to kind of, yeah, I don't know. I mean, intentions, reminders, anchor points, just so you feel like you have some kind of cleansing. Yeah. You know, water, obviously the element of water mm. is really good to bring in just to balance it out a little bit. You know, put the fire out a little bit because it's going to be a lot of fire energy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so And it's I okay not to be okay and it's okay to feel like you need to be held. But we can do things where we hold ourselves so you can set yourself up a little ritual. If you're feeling particularly ungrounded and overwhelmed, just sit, just be, just breathe, like Tuesday just showed us, and maybe just remind yourself of your intentions or yeah. that you are enough, you are whole. There's nothing you need to do in this moment other than to be and come back to yourself before you go back out into that big world. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Really, really important. So, and meanwhile, I'll be throwing myself fully into, into the flame. fire. <laughs> so fire, meaning fire, meaning fire. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here goes. So I will be really anchoring into my breath and my practice and my intentions just yeah. so that I feel I'm able to navigate myself through the flames with some kind of I don't know. I suppose sanity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there's something it's quite important because if you're new to creating any kind of ritual and you're not sure how to start or begin, I think you've got to, it, it's more about tuning into what works for you, whether that's mm. touch, smell, sensuality, you know, tap into those parts of yourself, which you feel brings you back in. I mean, if, uh, we all have different senses that we really like to sort of indulge in. So for me, mine's always smell and touch um what's yours you know think about that moon um, sign that's a good way to find out your inner kind of um yes what you need to nourish your inner world even if we're not so aware ourselves for example I'm Taurus in my moon sign so on my natal chart the moon was in Taurus at that time when I was born that would reflect I'm deeply sensual my inner world is about touch feeling smells so I feel like I'm able to fully let go and dissolve into that space when the lighting is nice, when I'm in my cosies, when I have some incense. I mean, I think all these things bring out the stillness in all of us, but sometimes we all have a little bit, we need a bit more of that or a bit more of this, and maybe that makes us feel a bit better and able to let go in this. So where is your moon sign? Mm. As, um, yeah, that's as really a such a great way, world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, great way to figure out what it is maybe what element is that yeah that feeds your soul and if you don't know i can help you <laughs> she's the girl to ask yeah, so. <laughs> definitely and i think um you know with your yoga practice just remember yoga doesn't always have to be you know mm. asana based um what we've just done here is still yoga you know just breathing and tuning in with your mudras um you know it, it it's, it's it's all relative so mm. as long as you're bringing that intention to, I suppose, ground and let go and be with yourself, um, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It can be anything you want it to be. It, embodiment is yoga, but, you know, mm. it's, it, I think everybody gets fixated on yoga practice, you know, having to be this strict ashtanga. Headstands. 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 <laughs> to be honest, you know, I'm not couldn't there. be further from the truth, you know, <laughs> especially for me, I, I, I you know, I, I might like that sort of thing and it, and it warrants its place. But yeah. I think the majority of the time, it's just being in the breath. That is really mm. what, what yoga is, you know, being with that breath, because if you're not breathing properly in your practice, then there's no benefit at all. Mm. Um, you're just doing, doing. Let's be all human beings together then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, 
Thank you, guys. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Have Get beautiful day. Let hey. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just let go, guys, and enjoy. And I hope you've enjoyed. Our and I'll see you on the flip side. Yes. See you soon, Cambosita. <laughs> <laughs> the next one will be when she's back from Portugal. Oh, that'd be a good update. I will endeavour to, um, on my, oops, fire. I will endeavour to... Um... <laughs> Sorry, oh, can't. the fire's beginning! <laughs> oh my God. She's setting things alight already, see? <laughs> She's setting herself alight. Oh, um, I will endeavour to update you on my journey. Let's just see how that unravels and flows. I may be available, I may not. I may be in this realm, I may not. But, so to stay in tune with us, check out our Instagram, Daisy Valentine. Sacred Flow, Tuesday, uh, I think it's Tuesday underscore yoga underscore bodywork. You You'll go. find us. We'll yeah, drop a link one of me. There's only one of her. Yeah. <laughs> Love you lots. Have a beautiful, blessed day and see you on the flip side.